Um, so I first uh, met Lynn Rosell, the executive director of, uh, of an organization uh, in Ottawa called Heart of Ottawa, H apostrophe A-R-T, uh, in 2012 when we were both uh, speaking at the uh, same event. And Lynn showed some images of some wonderful paintings by Heart of Ottawa artists. And I found these to be uh, really uh, compelling. So after our respective talks, I, I told Lynn uh, how much I liked the paintings, and she asked if I would ever, we had, had never met before, but she asked if I would ever want to collaborate with the artists at Heart of Ottawa. And so I happily uh, accepted her invitation, and we embarked on a year-long collaboration that uh, culminated in a multimedia performance called Turning the Page. And uh, this uh, performance featured uh, projected images uh, of paintings by Heart of Ottawa artists, and also a live uh, soundtrack uh, that was performed by the, uh, the roughly 40 uh, artists at Heart of Ottawa and me. And uh, this was uh, this took place last April at the National Arts Centre Fourth Stage here in Ottawa. Uh, so, in the course of pre preparing for the Turning the Page performance, uh, the project expanded in scope. Uh, to include a, a major retrospective of works on paper by Heart of Ottawa artists that was shown at Gallery 101. Uh, in addition, one uh, Heart of Ottawa artist named Irene Beck participated in a four-person exhibition at Saw Gallery. And independent filmmaker Andrew Hall made a documentary film about the entire project. Uh, so in this uh, panel presentation, uh, several of the artists and organizers involved in this uh, Turning the Page initiative uh, will reflect on the project and on the power of artistic collaboration across various forms of difference. And uh, we'll begin uh, by screening a few excerpts uh, from Andrew's documentary about the project as a whole. Like, remember we were talking about like raindrops? 
Does that almost sound like raindrops too, like with, uh, with the sounds that are coming through the speakers? A little bit, right? A little bit. So that's kind of like the motif that we're going to work with in this in the piece. Or you can figure out like that. And you can also rotate it. That's, that frog sound is huge. What's your cue to come back on? Remember? Sunday. Well, what's your cue? What do you? You're gonna be backstage. What are you listening for to come back on stage? Do I what music though? Water. You got it. This one right here, right? The solo waterfall. That's right. at heart was uh, truly remarkable. There's a 30 minute version of which these are some excerpts that we're going to show upstairs. There's a screening room on the second floor, just on the other side of the elevators. And uh, after this, there'll be a couple of performances that, or a couple of showings of the uh, 30 minute documentary there. seen the 30 minute version yet. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, okay, so next up uh, we have Lynn Rossell who's going to talk a little bit more about, uh, about the collaboration. So I'll turn things over to Lynn. Well, what stands out as a significant part of this collaboration is that both Jesse Stewart and Laura Margita Oops, sorry. <laughs> I'm one of the short ones here. Jesse and Laura immediately recognized and understood the creative spirit of the hard artists, and they jumped on board without a moment of hesitation. They saw the potential and possibility of what they and the artists could create together. For them, as for us at Heart Studio, the focus was on the artists, their art, and their creative process, not on their disabilities. This was not a collaboration of charity or goodwill, and it is very important to make that distinction. What it was was a collaboration of like-minded artists that included painters, writers, musicians, curators, directors, filmmakers, and art centers. Looking back, I wonder, was it 
serendipitous or fortuitous that we all came together in this remarkable way. I actually think it was the power of art that brought us all together. And we all just happen to be people that set no limits on where art can take us. This became evident in how this unprecedented initiative quickly grew to include and become a partnership with many people and organizations. Throughout the year leading up to the production at the National Arts Centre and the art exhibits at Gallery 101 and Saw Gallery, the artists rode a wave of creativity and exploration. The project started out as a blank page. There was no plan, no preconceived idea. The approach that we took was to have the artists and Jesse work together in an organic and creative way so the process was as much a part of the collaboration as the final production at the National Arts Centre. Jesse came to the studio and handed the artists the tools, percussion instruments, cutting edge technology, the iPad, the reactable. And over the months they played, experimented, listened and created music and movement together. Jesse asked for their input their suggestions, their thoughts and feelings. It was a re remarkable ebb and flow, a very authentic and organic process, and together they composed their multimedia work that included music, movement, visual art, and words. The same can be said for the exhibition at Gallery 101, another blank sheet. And together, Laura Margita, Jesse, and the artists co-curated their show, Turning the Page. The entire project was filmed by Andrew Hall as a record and testimony to collaboration and how it advances the potential of people, artists, and communities. What I hope you take away from our story and how it came to be and how it all unfolded is the possibility of collaborating with artists and organizations in your own communities. It is a known fact that artists often work in isolation, groups work in isolation, but that is changing clearly. Attitudes and technology are throwing the doors open as are you know, forums like this. Connecting through artistic collaboration is a profound and powerful experience one I encourage you to try. So if the opportunity comes your way, as it did ours, make sure you say yes. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll uh, talk maybe briefly about the musical component of this. Um, as Lynn uh, mentioned, the idea from the very beginning was to, to really make this project as collaborative as possible. And we didn't have any preconceived ideas about the form that the, the performance would ultimately take, but rather the artist and I agreed at the outset that we would operate on a kind of dialogic uh, model, making improvised music with one another on a weekly basis, and then we would see what emerged from that collaborative process. So in a way, the, the Turning the Page performance emerged from a year-long improvisation. And we decided to call the piece Turning the Page because uh, the other artists, organizers, and I came to feel as though uh, we were turning the page, metaphorically speaking, on some of the ways in which um, art and music by people with disabilities has been framed uh, historically by dominant discourses surrounding contemporary cultural production. And so uh, within the, the performance itself, we enacted the idea of turning the page by actually handing out pieces of paper uh, to all of the performers and all of the audience members at the outset. And the following words were printed on one side of the page. We are all, well, we are all artists, we are all musicians, we are turning the page on disability and the arts, we invite you to turn the page with us. And then at the um, bottom of the page, was an instruction, or sorry, at the top of the page was an instruction to read these words out loud, uh, not in unison, and that's how we began the performance. And then at the bottom of the page are the words, turn the page. So the audience literally turned the page uh, with us in a symbolic affirmation of our attempt to turn the page on received ideas about uh, disability in the arts. So 
on the back of, of each piece of paper was a list of instructions of uh, ways that uh, the piece of paper could be used to generate sound. So the piece, um, so the performance began with all 40 performers and all 180 audience members uh, making music together with pieces of paper. Uh, so uh, putting us all, all on the same page, so to speak. So from there, we went on to explore uh, the sounds of cardboard boxes, uh, various percussion instruments, including drums and shakers and rattles and gongs. And uh, one of my roles during the performance was to do a series of short solo uh, performances between group pieces in order to maintain a sense of musical con uh, continuity and give uh, the other musicians a chance to get on and off stage. And uh, the, the, the performance included a number of higher tech instruments as well, including an instrument known as the Reactable, uh, which is a virtual modular synthesizer and digital sampler uh, that takes the form of an illuminated uh, uh, interactive table. And so by placing and uh, manipulating blocks on the Reactable surface, performers can control different parameters of pre-recorded sounds. And so in, in the performance, we use the reactable to, to incorporate the voices of the artists uh, into the piece. So in advance of the performance, I asked all of the artists to talk about their art and about what art means to them. And I recorded their responses. And then we wove them together in the course of the performance using the reactable. And this was a, a kind of low stress way of incorporating the artists' voices into the piece. So instead of having the pressure of speaking in front of an audience, all they had to do was place a block on the table and then they would hear this recording of their voice. Uh, Turn the Page also used four iPads, uh, which were equipped with uh, software called the Adaptive Use Musical Instrument, or AUMI, A-U-M-I, uh, which uses um, the built-in uh, webcam in the iPad to track movement and translate that movement into sound. And so several of the performers, including Jesse Huggett, uh, who you will hear from shortly, had a background in uh, dance in addition to their, um, their background in the visual arts. And so the Almi software enabled us to incorporate dance into uh, the Turning the Page performance in a way that inverted the traditional relationship between dance and music. And instead of the body uh, responding to the music, the movements of the performers' bodies actually generated the music, actually orchestrated the music uh, that, that, that we heard. And uh, Jesse and I are going to do a short collaborative performance in a, first, in a few minutes, but, um, and that'll demonstrate the Almi software. Uh, but first I want to turn things over to Laura Margita, who will discuss the, uh, the Turning the Page exhibition that was shown at Gallery 101 uh, for the month or so prior to the performance. Thank you. When I started my job at Gallery 101, one of my first goals was to start meeting other cultural workers and makers in Ottawa. I was excited to meet Lynn, and right away we found our shared love of outsider art and our shared understanding of how outsider artists are perceived. Soon Lynn brought Jesse into the project, and we began this wonderful collaboration. The three of us found common ground around perception of art made by people with disabilities. The rights that all people enjoy should enjoy freedom of expression, and in our shared joy at the thought of working with the heart of Ottawa artists. While researching, I came upon a phrase by disabled academic Petra Cuppers, nothing about us without us. This became our credo. We would ensure that artists would have equal say in planning as well as creating 65 works on paper for the exhibition. Giving the artists the lead, they decided to create acrylic work on paper. Before the opening, each participated in curatorial studio visits to discuss their work, the ideas behind it, and their practice in general. Here are some stories that the heart of art heart artists shared with me. Uh, what you're seeing right now, this is uh, by Kelly Sagan, uh, and it's called Red Bull Cows, made in 2014. Kelly Sagan is a boisterous and emphatic speaker when it comes to her art. She knows a great deal about car cows as she was a 4-H member when she lived in Brockville. 
She still values her time at the farm with the animals. Moving to the city had its challenges and Sagan misses her friends from school. She does, however, keep her finger on the pulse of what the kids are doing today and she knows all about drinking Red Bull with booze. I think it's vodka. <laughs> this is by Elaine Bell, Roses Asleep in the Night, also made specifically for the show in 2012, 2014. Elaine Bell's sleeping roses are painted in the loving memory of her mother who passed away. She is painting her family in a spiritual manner so that they are imagined as flowers sleeping in a garden. There are many things floating in the night, says Elaine, which is the mystery of how a person become, can become a part of everything in the universe. The next picture is by Andre Lanthe, Cloud of Spring Blue Sky. Andre has been with Heart Studio for seven years. His artistic practice is largely based on an exploration of color, texture, and depth of field in landscaping, painting. As his technique grew, he began concentrating on details, sometimes only seen under a magnifying glass. An example of this is seen best in Cloud of Blue Spring Sky. Although Lante is quite accomplished, he bravely sets new goals for his practice. In Morning of Cloudy Sky, he widened his usual color palette, as you can see, and painted more loosely, exploring color to create depth of field, to see what could happen beyond the classic landscape techniques of diminishing size and shading. Ada Chan, I'm always on my toes. Ada Chan is a ballerina, a fiddle player, and artist. She wants all of us to know she can be whatever she wants to be. She understands that some people may see her disabilities as barriers, but they're not. Chan is a passionate artist and insists on being challenged in her pursuits, as it is the striving and the ambition that makes her happy. She wants to inspire us all to be brave and follow our dreams beyond the limits we may set for ourselves or that others may perceive for us. The final work I'm going to show is Irene Beck's Sidekick. Irene's work, as you heard, was shown simultaneously at Gallery 101 and Saw Gallery. To be curated by two artist-run centers was an unprecedented thing for Heart of Ottawa. Heart Studio Instructor Administrator Lynn Roswell kept her lunch bags. This collection became an installation at Gallery 101 called Sidekick. Irene is so full of joy, love, and pride with her accomplishments as an artist. And everyone who sees this work is impressed by its size and then by the beauty and honesty in each message. Thanks. And so that, uh, I'd like to welcome Debbie Radcliffe, one of the artists from Heart of Ottawa, to talk about uh, the experience. My name is Deborah Ratcliffe. I am an artist from Heart Studio. My nickname is Dragon Lady. I've been, <laughs> I've been an artist for 10 years. I come on Thursday. I am one of the Thursday girls. I would like to talk to you about our collaboration that we did with Jesse Stewart. It was fun and amazing. All the artists met Jesse on different days. Lynn introduced us to him. We talked about doing a concert with him called Turning the Page. Some of the artists at Heart of Ottawa have Williams Syndrome and other, others have disabilities as autism, Tourette's, Down Syndrome, Cerebral Palsy, and others. Turning the Page means to me that People with disabilities can do anything that they set their minds to. Jesse Stewart treated us like equals and humans and artists. He spent months teaching us different instruments. We had a lot of fun. We were practicing on different instruments. He talked about doing the concert. 
When we were asked to do a concert at the National Arts Center, we were exciting, excited and nervous. Jesse talked about how nervous he was about doing his own concerts when he first started <laughs> performing. He's a great teacher. He was very patient with us. He was an, it was an honor to meet him and have a great time with the instruments. He is a world-renowned world percussionist and composer. One day, Jesse brought in one of his friends and she pay, played her saxophone with us. We played on our it, instruments. Her name was Jane Burnett, a world-renowned famous jazz saxophonist. She was nice to talk to and she taught us how to rest in between beats. It was a lot of fun. Jesse got to know us and I showed him some of my artwork. We had a rehearsal, then a dress rehearsal, and then the concert. We, have a, we had a full house at the concert. There were news reporters, cameras, and I was interviewed about the concert. We also showed our artwork as well on the big screens. We played on snare drums, bells, shakers, the reactable and different instruments. The concert was fun. Our families joined in with us, participating with paper, clapping hands. There was a big finale at the end where all the artists came to play with musical instruments and the reactable. We were comp uh, com uh, complimented after the performance. It was exhilarating. It was the best concert ever. We weren't just performers, we were collaborati collaborators as well. Not only for the concert, but for the exhibition at Gallery 101 as well. We helped figure out what pieces would go in the show. It was fun working with Laura, the director of Gallery 101. All of the artists at heart worked together to make a large mural and a book that were a collage of pieces of brown paper that have, we have used over the years to cover the table. Tables underneath are, are the brown paper collage is a holy grail for us because it has all of our emotions in the paint swipes. For me, I look at the paper and all I see are of the emotions and it's like a passage through time where we are, where we have been and where we are going as artists. It is an open book that allows us to see what we are and who we are. Every time a painting gets sold, it takes a piece of, of our hearts. But it, stays on brown, but it stays on the brown paper too. It is our trademark. It's our, like our territory. It is like leaving your scent, your own marking. It is other, it's other marks too. It's like other continuation of our story. We have put our own marks on our paper and the history on the paper. The feelings on the paper include love, fear, frustration, disappointment, and laughter. Our souls is in the paper and our canvases. A little bit of our hearts are there as well. What a beautiful journey I've had so far. I am an artist and proud of it. My art means everything to me. It's who I am. Jesse Huggins, and 
I'm 24 years old, and I am an artist with Down syndrome, and I've been going to Heart Studios for many years, and working with Jess Stewart and collaborating with him on the National Art Center performance. It was a great experience. It was really fun, and I loved and enjoyed moving with the iPad. I created the sound through movement and dance, and as I was moving, the iPad made sounds to my movements. I found it really interesting because I didn't know that I could actually make sounds with my body. I go to Heart Studios on Friday, and when Jesse came, he bought some really cool instruments. I found out that, 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 that there are different ways to make music. You can take a box and tap on the box, or work with rhythm. You can use your voice. Jesse brought in the instruments called a reactable, and it had different cubes that you can put on, on top of the reactable, and they, and they can light up and, they, and it can record your voice. I think collaborating with different artists like Jesse is a great way to get to know people and to see what they have to offer. We had conversations and he really got to know us. Collaboration for me as an artist is really important to me because we are working with other people, other artists, and it opens lots of opportunities and possibilities. We really got to be more open, a sense of openness and diversity for everyone, the artists at Heart Studios, the NAC staff, Gallery 101, and the people in our community. It's important to have openness because we share our arts. We share who we are as people. People in the community get to know the artists and they discover what we as artists have to offer the world. Thank you.
I don't think, I think we're running a little late. I don't believe there's time necessarily for questions right now, but I, I think we'd all be happy to chat informally. Uh, is there a break now scheduled? Is that the plan, or what's happening now? I should know, but I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, perfect. Now it is indeed time for the break off sessions. You have a choice of uh, three thematic dialogue sessions this morning and another four uh, this afternoon. They will focus on promoting interdisciplinary and intersector dialogue on issues that cross uh, the different sectors of society. And